The Chernobyl disaster occurred on April 26th of 1986 and it was one of the worst nuclear disasters we have ever seen. Since then humans have been evacuated from the zone considering it is extremely unsafe to live in but of course the wildlife in the area didn't get the same memo. Over the years since the disaster, researchers and scientists have been studying the plants and animals in what is now called the Chernobyl exclusion zone in order to see how the radiation affects all types of life. On today's top 10 list we are going to be talking about some of the effects the radiation has had as we dive into the top 10 weirdest animals found in Chernobyl. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have cows. Cows are one of the sweetest and cutest animals out there and it totally makes sense why people call them grass puppies. The area around Chernobyl was known for its agriculture before the disaster so of course that means there were definitely a lot of cows that could be found. Since farm animals are not only expensive but can also be used as a source of income many people took their farm animals with them, but many of these animals had already been exposed to the radiation in some capacity, and while it didn't affect them right away, the newer generations saw much more of the effects. In 1989, many farmers began reporting birth defects in their animals, some being much more severe than others. As time went on, the cows became less mutated, but that doesn't mean the effects went away. As the cows continued to graze on feed that was contaminated, the effects became more internal. This has led completely normal looking cows near the exclusion zone to be begin producing milk that is toxic and not fit for consumption. This is just one of the clear examples of how even though the visible effects may have worn off, there are still lasting effects that we probably hadn't previously considered. In our number 9 spot today we have barn swallows. Any animal who lives in the exclusion zone have been affected by the disaster and that includes those who spend most of their time in the sky. I'm obviously talking about birds. The barn swallows in Chernobyl are one animal who have seen a change in their physical appearance that has lasted all all of the years since the nuclear meltdown. It is unclear why these birds have been affected greater than their land animal counterparts or if these changes will ever reverse to their previous state, but here's what they are currently dealing with. The swallows appear to have severely deformed beaks, disproportionate feathers, some had partial albinism, and they were seen to have much smaller brains. Of course, some of these issues are much worse than others, and I'm sure these changes have significantly affected their ways of life, but of course they continue to adapt as time goes on. It is sad that this human made disaster has affected them in such a negative way, but the fact that they are still around really shows their adaptability and resilience. In our number 8 spot today we have boars. Boars are often seen wandering around the exclusion zone, but they also make their way into the surrounding towns as well, which is creating quite a problem. Boars are a fairly common food source and it's not unusual to come across one, but here's the problem if you live in the area, how are you supposed to tell which boars are radioactive and which aren't? Basically, you can't can't until it's too late. The boars who aren't radioactive might come across and intermingle with one who is, but they also like to eat mushrooms and if they're searching for their food within the exclusion zone, it's a highly likely possibility that they'll find themselves eating a radioactive mushroom. This is posing quite a problem. In 2017 there was a study that found that approximately one out of every three boars that were killed in the nearby areas of Germany, which for the record isn't even that close to Chernobyl, have been found to be radioactive and super unsafe for human consumption. You'd think that being that far away would make you safe, but as we clearly now know, the effects of the disaster stretched far and wide. In our number 7 spot today we have Shavalsky's horse. These horses first originated in Mongolia and were wild horses that became endangered. They first became endangered due to hunters who would often kill the stallion, which of course would provide many difficulties in terms of reproduction. These horses weren't doing well in captivity, which made things even more difficult. This combined with the harsh winter which would often claim their lives left things looking quite grim for this species. In the late 1990s, however, in an effort to help repopulate these animals, 30 of them were released into the Ukrainian side of the exclusion zone, and it is believed that some of these original horses are actually still alive today, which is amazing, but camera trap images have also shown young horses, which means that they are repopulating, which is a huge win. Their expanding population in such a harsh environment could mean that they might potentially be able to return from the brink and go on to continue as a species, which is something we always want to see. In our number 6 spot today we have cats. In the rush of the evacuation, many pets were left behind in Chernobyl and that of course includes cats. With little to do and of course more kittens being born, this paved the way for a group of feral cats to take over the exclusion zone. These cats wander in and out of the zone and find all of their favorite snacks such as radioactive rodents or the less common radioactive insects. These cats certainly 
certainly have had quite a difficult time surviving as they are a perfect tasty snack for much larger predators and are certainly not equipped to deal with the harsh winters, but even still there is said to be at least 100 stray cats living in the exclusion zone. There are efforts underway to have the uncontaminated ones put up for adoption, but the difficulty is in testing them and also re-domesticating these animals who have had to fend for themselves for so long. In our number 5 spot today we have dogs. Since we just talked about the cats who were sadly left behind, it's only fair we talk about the dogs too. It's strange that these two domesticated animals would have such different experiences after the disaster, but they absolutely have. There are far more dogs who have managed to survive throughout the years than cats, but that is most likely due to the fact that they aren't as easy to catch and eat as prey as cats are. But dogs have a whole other challenge, and that is they have a hard time hunting and feeding themselves. There are workers who continue to work the dangerous job at the plant, and they continually feed the dogs living in the zone, which is something that truthfully is so nice to hear. It is also said that there are dogs living in this area that have begun mating with wolves, which is only going to breed dogs that will be more likely to be able to survive on their own, which I suppose is a good thing. Similar to the cats, many of the stray dogs are being studied to see if they can be adopted into homes outside of the zone so that they don't have to continue living in these harsh environments that they really were not bred for. In our number 4 spot today we have European Grey Wolves. One of the species of animals that has been thriving ever since the disastrous nuclear meltdown has been the European Grey Wolf. Due to the lack of humans in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, they have been able to thrive and it has been said that the wolves in this area actually have a population that is 7 times higher than that of comparable sites. Researchers are still trying to figure out exactly why this is happening, but it has obviously shown them that despite the effects of radiation in humans, the radiation clearly isn't affecting the wildlife's ability to reproduce. So this seems like just a regular grey wolf, but here's where things get a little different. Just because the wolves seem to be doing fine doesn't mean they aren't radioactive. These wolves, since they're such a high population, are beginning to travel farther and spread out more, which creates quite a problem. Not that we're just going up and petting wolves, but if you did come in contact with one of these wolves, you'd be getting a high dose of radiation just by touching them. Touching a carcass of these wolves with bare hands is absolutely not recommended. So while it is absolutely incredible to see the wildlife doing so well in this zone, we are now faced with an entirely different issue that we haven't really ever had before. In our number 3 spot today we have the Eurasian Lynx. This one is on this list for a different reason than most. It isn't because of anything this animal is or isn't doing, but instead is due to the fact that this animal was once believed to have entirely disappeared from Europe. It was fairly recently in 2014 that researchers realized they had made a comeback in a big way. Similar to most of the animals we've talked about today, the Eurasian Lynx has been able to thrive due to the lack of human population and interference. Their downfall was attributed to urbanization as well as hunters, and they were mostly wiped out in the early 20th century, although they remained in certain parts of Siberia. There is still a lot more research that needs to be done about these creatures to determine exactly how radioactive they are, and this will take time due to the dangers of the zone they reside in, as well as the nature of these creatures in general. But just being able to see that an animal that was struggling has been able to make such a comeback is probably one of the best things to come out of such a horrible disaster. In our number 2 spot today we have bison. Bison are right up there with wolves for most dangerous radioactive animal and that is due to their size as well as the fact that they are a source of food for some. These huge animals can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and are certainly not an animal that is easily messed with. Many bison weren't affected by the radiation immediately and instead it became much more of an issue once they started eating food that had been contaminated. They like to feed on grass and a lot of it and the radiation didn't only affect animal life but plant life as well making their food source a literal feeding ground for radioactive material. Similar to the wolves we talked about before, running into these guys isn't only a threat now because of their size, but now because if you get too close you could be facing some unsafe levels of radiation. In our number 1 spot today we have spiders. I've talked about my hatred for spiders a lot on this channel, but to be honest they keep doing cool things so I have to keep talking about them. Ok well maybe this one is less cool and more scary, but still, they deserved a spot. Spiders that are residing within the exclusion zone are of course radioactive, but it's not only the spiders that are now dangerous to touch, but it is also their webs. Spiders in Chernobyl are literally making radioactive webs, which is the stuff straight out of a comic book. These radioactive webs are also being woven in much different ways than they were before, which would suggest some sort of genetic mutation at play. Spiders were already a creature I'd like to stay far, far away from, 
from, but radioactive spiders really adds a whole other level. Not only are the spiders now dangerous for non-radioactive animals to touch, but walking through their web is equally as dangerous to those who aren't thriving in the radiation. So not only do you have to watch out for the regular old radioactive material, but now also the never ending construction of radioactive webs. Great. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. If any of these facts surprised you, let me know below in the comments. Let's have a little chat about Chernobyl. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Different, um, uh, oh, this was supposed to be later in the script, but it's not. Anyways, also shown young horses and foals. Are they foals? I think they're called foals or fowls. I'll just call them young horses. And they were mostly wiped out in the earliest, in the earliest. <laughs>